Here is Sharon and Rob. <laughs> Well, congratulations, guys, first of all, on winning the BAFTA Award for this. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. And, um, <laughs> BAFTA fans. And, of course, an Emmy nomination right out of the box uh, for writing that uh, first episode. Uh, very, very impressive. And it was, I was just telling you uh, backstage uh, how impressed I was with that, uh, the way you started this series, and then the way you've executed it as it goes along. You know, you get it in six episodes at a time. And do you guys have a sort of Bible that you go by? To, do you know where this thing's going, in other words, Rob? Or... We, we norm normally know slightly where it's going because, um, you know, the season one basically set us up for, for season two and, and season two has set us up for season three. But, I mean, we figure out the, the individual episodes and the minutia of it and the jokes and stuff sort of in the room talking a lot, oh, scribbling yeah. some stuff down. That yeah, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we kind of know where we want to go and we kind of know what we want to say, uh, how we wind up getting there, you know, changes. We've got no idea what season four is about. None. That's uh, <laughs> a slight Well, you issue. did, you wrote the first two sort of back, the first two seasons yeah. back to back, which we is did. like a whole yeah. thing. And then you had a bit of a break coming into the, the two episodes we just saw. There was mm -hmm. a, a bigger time that you had to think about it, I guess. Yeah. In this case. yeah. But no. we knew we wanted to pick up from the exact moment that, mm -hmm. that season two finished. That was... Seeing some, the receipt. And, exactly. Yeah. And, and from him sort of opening his mouth to form the word. What we didn't know was that I would lose the outfit I was wearing. Um, uh, yeah. So the, the biggest issue, we thought there would be so many issues, but the biggest issue was that I lost that top. <laughs> <laughs> and we did a big time jump between seasons one and two, and so we wanted to literally have it instantaneously have season three come on the back of season two, so that in case anybody was like, maybe that's what they do, is have a big time jump between seasons, yeah. and we wanted to be like, no, no, yeah. we'll do what we want. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you're madmen. You know how yeah. they did it. You know, you never knew what decade they were going to be in when they came back yeah. to another yeah. season. Yeah, madmen. <laughs> yeah. And they're crazy rules. Um, let me roll you back a little bit. I, you know, you are very, very big on, I don't know if you know this, but you're huge on Twitter. What? I'm not, what's that? It's yes. mm -hmm. 1.4 million followers, they tell me, which, mm. is, which is gigantic. Too but many. now, I hear one of your followers mm -hmm. was Sharon, and that's yeah. how you met. It's sort of like meeting cute in yeah, these Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I was a giant fan of Sharon's previous shows. So when I saw some years ago, seven years ago, I guess, I noticed that Jesus. you followed me. And I got very excited, and I rang a bell, and I sent her a message, and I said, hey, I'm a giant fan of your shows. Um, do you want to make a, a television show together that will be a global sensation? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we didn't know, you know, we became friends. And honestly, uh -huh. so, like, Sharon would come see me do stand-up. I would, uh, you know, do projects with Sharon, you know, like if you were over here, yeah. and we just became friendly, our families met each other, and uh, then we thought, hey, let's write a pilot together, you know, and it'll go nowhere, because we'd both worked in television enough to know that nothing, nothing ever happens. works, you know, <laughs> you can round it down to nothing ever working out, you know, that's, that's if you had to say. Uh -huh. So we wrote the pilot, but then just somehow it just kept going, which shocked both of us and still does. Were you surprised at the chemistry you obviously had uh, in the writing room? Because you are the only two writers of this series, period, that you yeah. are the writer's room here. We are, yeah. That's you it. Write that down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we are, and that was a pleasure because we sort of thought, I thought like, okay, you know, I looked at all the stuff Sharon had done and really enjoyed it and thought about why I enjoyed it. And I thought, well, it kind of reminds me of the things that I tell myself in my head to make myself laugh, or the, the sort of subject matter of my stand-up. So we thought, hey, this might work. You know, that doesn't mean it will work. And we were very happy when it, when it proved to work in the room. But, I mean, it didn't initially. I mean, I think, yeah. because we didn't, I mean, we knew each other, but we hadn't mm -hmm. worked together professionally. And it's, it's, a, it's a very intimate thing to write together, because you've got to, 
lose your inhibitions and, and mm -hmm. not be, you know, scared to say something that might not get a laugh. And you're very polite. Oh, and we would all, <laughs> during series one, we'd be like, okay, don't hate me. But one time a few years ago, I, you know, nightmare, nightmare, horror, <laughs> monster thing. And uh, now we don't do that anymore. No. We're like, I don't care what you think. I did yeah. this terrible thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Put but, it in the show. You know, but then as soon as it, as soon as it clicked in, um, then it's, I, I can't believe how easy it is. Did you, you know. always know you were going to cast yourselves in these roles? Was that always part of the plan when you first decided? Yeah. We're, we're, we're that shallow and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and frankly desperate for work. And, and we were, but we were going to change our names. We we're like, we'll just whatever, write our, use our names, and then we'll change it. And then we go to, went to shoot it, and the network was like, no, you keep your names. And we're like, yeah. okay. And uh, you know, maybe know. we shouldn't have done that. I know. But, we kind of you know. feel like now we, we shouldn't have done that. We should have been yeah. Mora <laughs> and Frank or whatever. But yeah. because people, you know, they think we're them. They and, think we're them. And and we're not, you know? We're not. <laughs> I'm not me. You're, you're not, not You're him. not them. No. We know not <laughs> us. I was watching, I know much about you two. I thought you were married. And okay. I thought this was like, you know, Lucy and Dizzy <laughs> and the whole thing, you know, getting together and putting on a show. And when I discovered that it is semi-autobiographical, but both mm -hmm. from your separate marriages and mm -hmm. your separate lives, it's just a real neat trick to pull that off and be as believable as you are. It's very authentic. Oh, well, in, in Sharon you. and I joke that if we weren't doing the show, like the chemistry that we do have, we feel like is more like, in real life is more like fraternal twin rather than lover. So that you can add that sort of disgusting element uh, <laughs> when you're watching this. That's how we think of us. <laughs> if watching us doesn't already, already make you feel uncomfortable enough. Yeah. Uh, Just imagine, imagine us we're related. in uh, adjacent amniotic sacks <laughs> in some side of some giant woman uh, lumbering down the road. Uh, I don't know. Okay, that's season four. Please don't tell anyone what I just said. <laughs> no spoilers. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, that, that is, uh, what, so what is your writing process then? Because this is obviously, uh, you're in England. You're here a lot of the time, right? No, no I, hundred, I totally live in London now. Now you live in yeah, London. Yeah, once the show got picked up, I moved there with my family. When you were writing, though, you used Skype a lot, I heard. Or... We did in the yeah. beginning. And that worked then. I really wouldn't want to do it again. No, it, I mean, it, it, was, it was great to um, get, I mean, we, we wrote the pilot pretty much mm -hmm. side by side, because yep. I, I was in LA at the time. But um, when it came to the series, we would, you know, talk about ideas over Skype. And then we had this sort of insane sort of 24 hour writing machine because of the time difference. So I would yep. wake up and there would be scenes Fresh there pages. from Rob. And, <laughs> And then when he would wake up, there'd be, you know, fresh stuff for me. So we got the whole series written in like, yeah. like that. But then we realized it wasn't very good. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> for the first five episodes we did. I think yeah. we wrote like an episode a week for five weeks. And I know, then the we sixth were like, one oh my God, we were like motoring along. <laughs> you know, this is easy. Uh, and then we, like I said, we read it and it wasn't good. And so I went to LA and we, we, we sat side by side each other in a tiny little room. Mm -hmm. with no air and very little food or sustenance and, uh, and yeah, rewrote them all. Mm -hmm. Is that right? We're better oh, together, yeah. like yeah. we're better side by side. <laughs> so Catastrophe, the title, did it just come to you? This is gonna be it, this is, you know, all these things happen to you and it's gonna have to continue to happen to you since that's the title of the show. Well, I mean, the title came from Rob. Well, you came I up stole with it. it. You stole it. Right, from Zorba the Greek. Because uh, Zor in Zorba the Greek, somebody asked him, uh, you know, what, do you have a wife, you have kids? He goes, yeah, I got a wife, I got kids, the full catastrophe. And uh, uh, so that we, so the catastrophe for us isn't like what happens in each episode. No, it's, it's just, marriage. It's just existence, being alive. <laughs> <laughs> the nightmare of life. <laughs> As but, you have said, yeah. it's a very unromantic look at romance. Yeah. Which I love that phrase. Yeah, it's an unromantic that's romantic sort of comedy. what a lot of marriages are. Yeah, I mean, you know, I feel, or we both feel kind of responsible not to put too glossy um, a coat on, on romance, the kind of romance that you see on screen because it's a lie and uh, <laughs> it's unfair that people see that and think, well, that might, what's, what's wrong with mine? We like them to see something really messy and awful and, and feel, you know, happier that, that you know, <laughs> that there isn't maybe such a mess after all. And you know, you both have kids, you both have um, uh, spouses, and uh, here you're working with your TV kids too. What's that like going in all these zones for you here? 
Um, working with TV kids yeah. is awful. Um, Babies. We, we, we hate child actors. And, <laughs> and we always have. So we, we give them no lines and um, we, we just, we use them, basically. And we use them <laughs> as bodies. They're twins, which is fun yes. because uh, there's some British labor law where you can't work a kid too hard. I think it's stupid. <laughs> but so each kid, each kid is played by two kids. Yeah. yeah. So there's two babies and then two Frankies. And so it's kind of fun. Yeah. And um, when one's on screen, the other one's cleaning our chimneys. Yep. Getting on with that. Um, no, we, we, they're, they're not in it that much, and, and it, yeah. it's for the reason, genuinely, that we, you know, we, di we didn't want to write, we didn't want to write kid lines. We're not kids; we don't know how they speak. Um, <laughs> but, but um, also, we wanted it to be about them. So, you know, even when in the second season, when we jump forward in time, and they, you know, they've got two kids now, we still wanted it to be about the relationship, and not necessarily how their relationship fares in that family situation, not about the family, yeah. you know? Um, I, I love the content. Some people have said, wow, this show is really raunchy. Oh. But it is, you go for it, you guys. Uh, <laughs> really? I mean, bad luck, it get, it's a lot less raunchy this season. <laughs> <laughs> is that, well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, it's raunchy. Sure, oh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah, actually the first episode was a bit hot, I mean, wasn't it? I think that, you know, life is like, our lives are mostly like deadly, boring deserts of like PG, punctuated with like triple X, you know, any human life, like you probably do wake up in the morning, do one fucking horrific thing, then have a pretty boring, you know, then maybe once a week you do something disgusting before you go to bed. And so that's, what, you know, what we try to, we just try to have it be real, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was important for us that the sex in the show be not necessarily pretty, you know, that mm -hmm. it's sort of, um, you know, yeah. stolen kind of moments or, you know, trying to do it before a kid comes in or, you know, I guess up against a shed occasionally. From but, time um, to time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're further into their marriage in season three, so there's obviously less sex. How, you know, and then you're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, well, we'll see. And you're already gonna do a, a season four, we know that, so yeah. that's four seasons. Um, <laughs> yes. But how far do you see you doing this show? Uh, well, I think it would be irresponsible to commit to more than 25 seasons. <laughs> right like, right, I don't think we should just say that right now, that we're gonna do 25 seasons. No, I, I don't know. I have no idea is my we're, answer. We're, we're genuinely amazed that, it, that it's still going anyway. How did this we get is, to do three? Yeah. You know I mean? But it, it's, a, it's a massive um, pleasure and a privilege because you spend a lot of time coming up with these characters, not just the Robin Sharon characters, but the characters that surround them. And, uh, you know, quite often you do that and then someone comes along and cancels your show and then they're dead and you just, you know. <laughs> um, but it, it's nice that you, you get the opportunity to really explore them and you get to know them better the more you write about them. But um, You have a great supporting cast in this. Yeah. All, all, yes, we do. Everybody in this show is so good. And of course, the late, great Carrie Fisher was part of it too. Um, in fact, I think she was shooting it, but when she was coming back to L.A. Yeah, she just yeah. finished a couple of days before. So she's in season three all she's the way She's in through. season three. No, she's, she's only in episode six. Um, okay. But she's a huge part of it. But she's a big, big, big part of it. Wow. And, and what was that like having her on the show? Uh, you know, it was... The a, greatest yeah, possible dream come blessing. True. Yeah, I mean, we, magical. We didn't kind of... Um, we didn't fully even register that she was in our show until season two because oh, yeah. it seemed so astonishing that she would, you know, take the time to come over to the UK and, you know, do our little Yeah, show I mean, the first time she came on to set, I was like, oh my, oh my God, oh my, oh my God. <laughs> like, couldn't believe no, we, she was there. We were following her around Just the place like her amazed. ducklings. Really? Yeah. Oh, well. yeah, every time she turned around, we were like, <laughs> <laughs> Tried to get her email address at the end. Yeah, wasn't yeah. getting, didn't get it. Um, in, sec in the second season, she was in it a little bit more, so we got to spend a bit more time with her. And then by the time season three came around, we were like, oh, we think she actually likes being in this show. Let's, you know, yeah. let's make the most of it. And and so we wrote this episode where she's has a huge part, and and she's wonderful in it. She's as funny as she always is mm -hmm. um, but there's some really sort of heartfelt kind of moments as well where you, you kind of get to find out how she became yeah. uh, that slightly <laughs> monstrous character and yeah. uh, 
her origin story. Yeah. So yeah. So we we you know we got to know her more as an actor, and we got to know her more as a as a as a person as well. And she was a really good person, you know, really oh yeah, lovely, funny, but kind, present, giving, just supportive. Great woman. Yeah. Did you see the uh, documentary Bright Lights that she? Do you know done? what? I can't watch it yet. I can't oh. sort of. She talked about it a lot um, at the time because it was just before it, it came out, so yeah. we knew all about it. But um, no, I can't. It was hard even watching it in, in the edit. You know, watching because she's. It was so sudden and and she's so alive on on screen and it was sort of you know, difficult to think for not being around. Are you involved, speaking of the edit, and you know, the, the, it's just got great production values across the board. Oh, you have a terrific you. director. Yeah. Ben Taylor. Yeah. Ben Taylor, who directs all of them. Yes. Every single episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're very loyal to all of your... <laughs> oh, no. Well, I they're mean, loyal to us. Yeah, I mean, we can't thing. believe that they... I mean, it's amazing that we've had the same team the whole we, way through. We, we kind of emotionally forced them to yeah, do the third yeah, yeah. season. Oh, yeah. We were like, well, we can't do it without you. And, but that's what's so great. It is like elongated movie. I mean, yeah. six episodes. And so you, to have that kind of continuity, which isn't always available, as you know, yeah. In, yeah. in series television, yeah. uh, is a great thing. Your musician also, I love the music. The music mm -hmm. uh, underscores it beautifully. What, uh, Julian? Ollie Julian. Ollie Julian, Ollie Julian. Yeah. Yeah. is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all of, all of those kind of uh, tech credits, as they say in the business, are. Yes. That's what we say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, we've got an amazing team, and we we know we're really lucky to have them, and yeah. they they've all stuck around, and so it's a it's a nice sort of family atmosphere when we film. But every single person who works on the show really cares about it. You mm -hmm. know, um, we don't have enormous um, budgets, so it takes an awful <laughs> lot of work and dedication to make it look the way and, and sound the way it does. Is the reaction different? Uh, the show's a big hit in England, and. And now here too is the reaction. Do you find that different when you come here than it is in England on the streets from no. people? Well, I think we were saying today that it's with the the final episode of the first season. People were like, uh, "I thought I was watching a comedy." <laughs> and at the end of the first season, is we do not tie it up in a pretty bow. And uh, American <laughs> British people were like, "Yeah, of course, a terrible thing happened." Yeah, That's yeah. Like, yeah, we lived through the They're blitz. Used to that. Yeah, that, whereas American people were like, "I just thought it was." It's going to be puppies, and uh, <laughs> and so pe people got angry. Some people got angry about the end of season one, and uh, you know, so we got together and we thought, "Fuck them! Let's make it even harder <laughs> in series two. So I think that's important. When you make a show, you should dare the audience to like it, yeah. and it should be an act of violence against the weakest ones. <laughs> <laughs> well. Where is it going? Can you give us some spoilers here? We just saw the first two. There's four more. And, um, you know, do you have a favorite episode that you've written that maybe we haven't seen yet? Yeah. yeah we, 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 we love episode five. Yeah, the, we're pretty excited about episode five of this season. Um, you know, I, I actually, I, I, I love all the episodes, but um, episode five just is one of those ones that's sort of story-wise, and it's sort of half set in Ireland, half set in, mm -hmm. in, in, in London, and... Uh, it's just, I don't know, it just came together in a way that we're and kind of proud of. Episode three, the one that comes after the one you just saw, I think is probably the funniest one it's of all three series. Yeah. It's so silly. They, we made a very interesting old man. <laughs> uh, he might be a wizard. And, uh, no, he's not a wizard. Uh, but uh, he is an interesting old fellow. And yeah. uh, he's great. Um, I think the wheels come off a bit in Ep 5. Um, yeah. in, in the other episodes, we kind of, you know, the, the story is still moving along. You still know that Rob's, you know, in a bit of trouble and, you know, financially they're on rocky ground and, you know, her work situation and his work situation. But it, mm -hmm. nothing really terrible, terrible happens. But in, in, in Ep 5, it kind of... It goes off the rails, and, and it was a challenge to sort of do that mm -hmm. and, and keep it as funny as we wanted it to be. Um, so, yeah. And I think there are four actors from the Star Wars world in oh, Series yeah. 3. Yeah. So, you know, if you like Star Wars, don't see Star Wars. <laughs> Watch our show. <laughs> 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 Who are they, other than Carrie Fisher, obviously? Um, well, got... Oliver. Um, what's his? He's got, he's, he has one of those 
lovely three word names. Um, well, there's Donald Gleason. Yeah, Donald Gleason, who you just uh, Oh, yeah, saw. he was He's also great. in. Yes, um, Terry Fisher. Yeah. Um, Rizzle Kicks. Oh, yes. Um, Jordan. Yeah, Jordan, St Jordan Stevens. Jordan who was, Stevens. Who was in, um, and Rogue One. And Oliver, what's his last name? Oh, what's Oliver doing? What? From episode three. Oh, is he? Yeah, is he's, he? In, he's in uh, Phantom Menace. Oh. Like a big part, yeah. <laughs> Get off. I can't believe you can't remember your favorite movie, Phantom Menace, <laughs> of all the supporting characters. It's so Wait, weird. Of course. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But, uh, <laughs> I feel terrible that I can't remember his name. That is a terrible uh, thing. Yeah. Men in Black forget that we can't remember his name. Boom. <laughs> 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 so, Rob, your, your big background, comedy background, is a stand up. Yeah. Stand up. Yeah. Do you still do that a lot? I do, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to do a bunch of shows in London in July. And yeah, I want to do more. I had, my wife and I had too many children right in a row. And so it's hard for me to travel too much to do it. So my new thing is I'm just going to do a bunch of shows at one small theater in London uh, in July and see if I like that at a theater that I can walk to. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Sounds like a good gig. Have you tried it out in London so far? Or, um... I've done a lot of stand-up in London, and I yeah. love it. I love it a lot. It's an excellent stand-up city. Yeah. Um, this is an amazing... Uh, when I did the intro for this, I was talking about this incredible setup that Amazon's done here. You can see they care about their shows mm -hmm. and presenting them in the right way. I've never actually seen anything like yeah. what they've set up here. What are they like uh, to deal with here? Because this show I could not imagine on network television, obviously, yeah. with the kind of freedom that you are given yeah. to do. It's, Utter freedom, yeah. magnificent freedom. Yeah, it's really great. I think they would, I hope, mercilessly cancel it if we didn't deliver the thing, but they, it's not like they check in and they're like, oh no, we got a bad feeling. <laughs> like Amazon, I think, really in a loving manner, would give you the rope to hang yourself with. And then if you did, then they would kill you and the whole <laughs> cast and crew. But as you're doing it, yeah, so much freedom, it's scary. But also, um, just very, very supportive of it. I mean, you know, there's so many um, great shows made at the moment. There's so much good TV. And the fact that our little show that we make in, in the UK is being watched um, here at the moment and that people know about yeah. it is because of the, you know, the, the, the support they, they put behind it and um, they've done it for every season and yeah, yeah. It's Do you get free shipping? Free shipping, no. Uh, I, for, I have prime, I forget that I paid for it, you know, <laughs> but... Uh, I'll I, get the two day yeah. thing, yeah, it's really great. <laughs> Um, uh, that's interesting to me, you know, because this actually, you mentioned television is so good now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that, that this is almost a new golden era of TV, mm -hmm. that it's much more preferable to be working in television than it is in feature films. Did you have the ambition to maybe do a movie together or are you happy in, in TV here with, with the kind of quality that's coming out now? Uh, I think a movie would be a very natural thing for us due to the fact that uh, our one of our seasons is not too much terribly longer than a movie. And we do think of them as having a real sort of filmic arc. So yeah, we would love to do a movie. Um, cool. You know, I mean, the definitely we would love to and because of you know the challenge of it and I, I love going to the cinema I love the experience of it but I think a lot of filmmakers or independent filmmakers move into TV because they can get an audience I mean you it's a similar sensibility when you when you make TV for you know Amazon or you know any of the sort of um, um, cable networks and and but at the same time it's very hard to make an independent movie that that many people get to to see you know because people don't put their the, the clout behind them or the advertising and so it's, it's a very attractive it's very attractive to work in, in TV now. And you did an, another series that was well known in Britain before mm -hmm. this, Pulled? Pulling. Pulling? Yes. Pulling, yes. yes. Um, how did that experience compare? For, oh, for well, Pulling was my, the first sitcom I ever made and uh, I mean it's very similar in that I, I, I wrote it with um, one other chap, Dennis Kelly and um, even though it was the first thing we ever made, somehow we, we were big enough assholes to say, no, we're making it our way. So, uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah, very, very similar. For some reason, I mean, we, and we made it for the BBC. They, they let us just do what we wanted. I don't know why or how, but they did. And uh, so, yeah, it was similar in, in a lot of ways. If you haven't seen Pulling, you have to go home and watch it right now. Because, yeah, I saw Pulling and I was like, what did I just see? It was <laughs> absolutely just the best. <laughs> That's what's yeah. so great. <laughs> we're all gonna we're all gonna watch uh, pulling. Of Aww. believe me. Mm -hmm. Now so um, we're gonna go to some questions from the audience. We have two mics, and unfortunately we don't have a mic stand. So when you get a mic, if you have a question, after you're done, throw the mic across the way to someone. Just toss it across the room, because uh, I don't know how else we're gonna do it. But who's got the mics here? First of all, um, okay, there they are in the back. Who's got a question? Or you can continue staring at us. <laughs> uh, somebody here, I'm sure, must have a I'll question. I'll ask a question since Over the there? man okay, with the good. mic was standing right next to me. Um, as writers, is having a six-episode order a blessing or a hindrance for you guys to create your story and character for the season? It's a blessing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be because we... We thought about getting more writers for season three, and we met with some very funny people, but we realized it would take longer yeah. to like train them in our <laughs> weird thing than it would to just write them ourselves. So in theory, we'd like to do more, I, but like we are selfish and want to write them. So yeah. I don't know how. We, and then people like their TV shows to come out roughly once a year, so we could take, you know, three years and then, you know, deliver more episodes, but then, you yeah. know, one of us might die. I mean, I, I, th I think six episodes is a really nice amount to tell a, a sort of beginning, middle and end um, story because it is, like Rob was saying, not that much longer than a, you know, a pretty hefty feature. So you, you kind of, you feel like you can really begin your story and, and motor it through, whereas I think when they're when there's more episodes, there's not necessarily filler, but there's more sort of standalone episodes and you kind of, you know, have to explore other avenues. Whereas we can just say, mm -hmm. this is what this series is about and this is how we're going to get there. And we have, you know, episodic ideas, you know, circling around it, but you can tell a sort of whole arc quite well. It's the dialogue is just so rich in this <laughs> show. So consistently funny and unexpected that I, I don't know, do you take notes at, while you're at home in your own lives? Oh, this is gonna be good, you know, from, from your own, and then just like compare it or? Um... I mean, I write down stuff all the time. I'm, I'm sure you do as well, but most of it is just when we're in yeah, the room Yeah, we just get together. together and try to make each other laugh and, yeah. uh, <laughs> and think things up, basically. I mean, we, we, we overwrite, so oh, I think the reason time. why it seems rich is maybe because then we sort of condense it down and just, yeah, you know, cut out all keep, the, the, keep the good bits. <laughs> cool. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to get you a mic. He's running up here right now. Because there's no way I'll hear you from here. <laughs> <laughs> but they won't hear him. <laughs> Given that your mindset going into it was zero of selling the show, what was the process of moving it up to like 1%? 10%, 100%. What was the process? Of what? I Selling the show. Selling the you show. You said when you got into creating it, you thought it was zero. The chances of getting it made were zero. Oh. How did you move? What, what was your process or what was your luck? or how, well, What we, happened? We, we, we didn't really write a treatment, did we? Because, um, well, Rob was doing a stand-up show in, in, in uh, London and a bunch of sort of commissioning people came down. Oh, how did that happen? Oh. I got offered a pilot script deal, yeah. right? And then I was like, okay, I want it to be good, so I should ask Sharon to write it with me. And then, right? Yeah. And then we, and then we both, even before that though, had talked about doing something that was a man and a woman writing together who yeah. were also in a relationship in the show. And so, yeah, then we did that. And then the BBC turned it down. Yeah, and BBC then, said no thanks. you know, we, instead of just like <laughs> putting it to one side, we, you know, gave it to other people and, uh, and they picked it up and they asked for another episode. And so we wrote two episodes. And then they said, these episodes aren't quite right. Turn them into one episode. So then we rewrote two episodes as one episode. And that became our pilot. And then, you know, we made the pilot. And then we waited about a year. Yeah. And then finally they said, you can make the series and... Um, also, yeah. if, if for anybody who's, who's seen, you know, all of the show, with the first two, the first 
uh, the first pilot script was the first two episodes of the first two seasons. Yeah. So it had the bit, the time jump that happens between one and two seasons yeah. we had happening in the first episode. And so then the, the, they were like, what if you showed them actually getting to know each other before having lots of children? And we were like, sure, we'll give it a shot. And uh, so thanks yeah, for that the idea. Yeah, season ended up uh, being about, but... <laughs> so we're malleable, you know, yeah. we did, it didn't come whole cloth out of us. But because there's cute. so many steps along the way, I mean, that's the reason why you just assume nothing's ever going to happen or, you know, <laughs> if it, it does, it's, it's kind of, it's more likely than not, you know, um, that it'll turn into nothing. And, and so, you know, you're, you're doing, you're, you're writing it because you enjoy writing with the person and yeah. you're making it with and you hope that something will happen and, you know and then suddenly it's a show. Okay, yes. Oh, it's Rick. Hello, Rick. Question, you're doing improv when you're on the set, or is it pretty because of your backgrounds that it might be uh, a necessary tool to improv on Right, occasion. do we do any improv on set was uh, the, the question. Yeah, And, and no. the answer is a resounding no. No, uh, except Carrie. Yeah, Carrie Fisher's allowed to improvise. <laughs> we don't even improvise because when we write, we talk so much and we yeah. read the scripts out loud back and forth so much. And we read it as all the different playing characters Playing all the well. parts. and uh, Badly. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so we know what it sounds like. We know what we think is funny uh, down to, I mean, like sickos, like yeah. worse than mammoth sickos. Horrible. <laughs> um, horrible. Like down horrible to the um freaks. or the uh. Like uh, we'll go up to Ben Taylor, the director, and be like, he didn't say, he didn't say mm, uh, <laughs> in between, and it's in the script. So ask him a what his fucking deal is, yeah. and then b to say what we wrote. We um, thought long and hard about that. <laughs> uh, you know. I just well, you know that that's that the meant worst something. part about us. Yeah, we're not good people, <laughs> but um, but you know, I mean, that doesn't mean that it isn't a, a, a playful atmosphere. I, I mean, I, I hope when actors come and work on the show, and when when we work on the show, that it's a fun experience, and you can try stuff out, and obviously bring whatever character you want to the room. But when it comes to the MMOs, yeah. <laughs> you know, we'd like Don't them said. Skip them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have time for one more question before you can go out there and find six different bars and all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> so, yes, uh, there's a mic coming to you right here. How do your um, significant others feel about you pulling from your personal experiences with them for the show? Oh, uh, my wife gave me an answer to this question. Oh, okay. Which I'll say now. <laughs> she, said, she said, this is what you should say. You should say that I, you should say I'm much angrier about how amazingly nice your house is in the show and how much nicer it is than our real house than <laughs> that you have sex on screen. And uh, why can't we live in a house like that? So that's, my wife's like, use whatever you want, but put me in a nice house for Christ's sake if you're gonna cannibalize things from my life. <laughs> that's, that's what my wife thinks. Uh, my husband doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, listen, you, you guys are so much fun. The show is really terrific. Congratulations on everything that's happening with it, all the awards so far. It premieres again, a season three, a week from Friday, April 28th. Tell your friends, enjoy the night, and let's thank Rob and Sharon. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.